a little more abbreviated today as we get into uh, kind of back into uh, uh, the, the swing of things with this uh, particular meeting. Obviously, obviously, uh, um, there's my video, sorry about that. Um, obviously, the uh, uh, events of the weekend and, and other fronts are um, also kind of I mean, Laura, I do, I do welcome you for uh, the, this particular meeting. I, I know that as we watch uh, across the country and even specifically in Nebraska, seeing, uh, you know, kind of the, um, uh, you know, from protests to um, actual violence and other things in streets is one of the things that I would say is, uh, um, unfortunately a thing that I would have thought was in the history books and from the past and that we're living through some of those moments today and so we know that the, the, the dynamics from the um, death of George Floyd and the on kind of ongoing concerns about racial injustice and uh, concerns for um, you know society as a whole are probably weighing on our students weighing on you certainly weighing on our staff at the agency and so um, uh, we'll, we'll have probably more to, to say on those fronts as, as we continue on. I, um, I also know that uh, this is weighing heavily on, on uh, folks in, in uh, um, well, probably all sectors, but certainly even among the public health officials um, uh, as I've had some opportunities to chat with them today. So, so I, I share that not, um, not knowing what the, the future may hold, but the reality is that uh, obviously, the impacts of uh, what we've been experiencing from the coronavirus on through uh, have a, a, a lot of weight on our on our uh, society as a whole. And so, I just uh, wanted to share that with you as we as we continue today's conversation. Um, if the governor is not able to join us today, um, I just I will say that as you look at kind of the spread of the virus. Uh, around the the state, at least, is what they'll say is, I guess, starting to flatten out. Um, um, the number of cases um, seem to peak, uh, depending on where you're at within in the state, but it certainly has seemed to peak. And then a lot of the concerns around where we go to kind of maintain uh, um, that level of uh, um, attention anyway is still important and still important in, in areas of the state as we kind of had some uh, directed health measures from the governor that are starting to open open things back up uh, as of today in certain areas of the state as well. I know that uh, some schools probably are experiencing uh, uh, opening uh, weight rooms and things today and obviously keeping track of how that's going. Uh, and how people's behaviors kind of work in that. I know people are probably excited in some cases, cases to be able to re-enter into some of those environments. And, and obviously, uh, kind of watching that all with uh, an eye towards uh, uh, health and safety is something that I, 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 don't, I, I don't take for granted in all of your uh, abilities to, to do that work. So uh, if, if we do get the governor on, I'll have him kind of share some additional comments perhaps about that. But I'm, I'm going to jump into some of the launch Nebraska updates. And there's kind of a, uh, I have Lane Carr on with us today. So thanks, Lane, for joining. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of start to talk through some of this and invite Lane to just kind of join me in a bit of a dialogue about where we're at and, and some of our next steps. For, for many of you, you uh, you know that we've released additional guidance, obviously around summer learning over the last uh, uh, week, I guess, uh, as, that, as that goes. And we have tried to uh, provide uh, uh, an opportunity for folks to understand that as well as possible. And I know it's a, a, a somewhat of a, a challenge, but obviously there's the importance of kind of our governance and leadership and planning, our conditions for learning and our continuity of learning. And then I, I wanna be able to walk through with you a little bit of a, a sense of how I would hope eventually we're able to start assessing risk at some scale uh, and, and at the appropriate scale at a local level as well. And so we'll talk through that. And then finally, I have Brian Halstead on uh, today just to kind of be able to chat a little bit about where we're at on the CARES Act uh, uh, application and kind of our next our next phases and beginning to roll that out. So we'll, we'll give you those updates today and it may be a, a slightly abbreviated meeting. 
Uh, we'll get back to some of the other routines of having other panelists on. I didn't really get a chance like normal to uh, kind of connect with folks in advance uh, to do that work uh, uh, this weekend. And so I'll be reaching out to some folks on that front too, so we can kind of get back in that routine. So um, let me, I'll jump into the launch in Nebraska. And obviously we're, we are hoping that there's a lot of joint efforts taking place. And I, I'll thank Jack Moles who joined us at the last meeting. Uh, for NERCSA, I know we've had some outreach from GNSA uh, trying to work with uh, the schools that might have some like and similar uh, circumstances. I thank the, the folks that are on my uh, uh, advisory, the commissioner's advisory uh, committee from around the state, uh, the 24 superintendents or so and ESU uh, folks and whatnot that participated in meeting last week chatting about kind of some of our next steps and and I, what I will tell you is it's really that that kind of thoughtful nature of what you're diving into that work and we hope that uh, Launch Nebraska can kind of be a bit of a model for that. I think we've highlighted before there's really a, a role for school leaders at all levels, boards and principals and superintendents and teachers um, and I, I think it's important and some of that guidance in the Launch Nebraska allows us allows us to go that direction and then I, I, I will talk, I'm, I'm going to have Lane kind of talk about the structures that we have set up around uh, Launch Nebraska and some conversations that are happening, but I will also talk a little bit about our next steps on Rule 62. So Lane, do you want to kind of highlight some of the kind of big, the big buckets of work that are taking place right now and maybe some folks that are involved generally uh, across the, those buckets of work? You bet. And by the way, Commissioner, just so you know, your video is kind of coming in and out. So it may be best to just turn that off so we can hear you a little bit better. So yeah, thank you all for your time today. And I wanted to just share some quick updates uh, around Launch Nebraska. So as the Commissioner spoke about on the front page of our Launch Nebraska website, you can see it's small on these three pictures or on this picture, but there are three links there that have to do with summer school guidance. Um, so you'll see some information that was a collaboration from the Department of Health and Human Services, from our local public health departments, and from UNMC, all kind of coalescing and cohering around um, the best practices for our schools as they consider summer school. Is part of that too, you'll also notice that there are some academic considerations, so really thinking about what you know what are what's the purpose of your summer school efforts what are you trying to do um, with summer school and then the final piece is specific guidance around special education so um, and for our students with disabilities so kind of thinking of those three things as a package we really wanted to get those out to you as soon as we could and that happened again last week because we know that that is top of mind for you the other thing that uh, you will notice or that you should have noticed is that the commissioner sent out graduation guidance for you, um, as he mentioned, um, and huge thanks to Jack Moles and NERCSA for really taking a step and putting some thoughts down on paper. And then once again, for our local health departments who took a look at that and made sure that we were all uh, on the same page. So as far as kind of next steps for us, as the commissioner said, We've broken down our Launch Nebraska work into these three big pillars, the leadership and planning, uh, conditions for learning and continuity of learning. And in each of those, we've been asking for uh, some volunteers to kind of help us think through, look through the language, think through areas that we might need uh, more work and uh, even additional professional development, et cetera. And if you'll go to the next slide for me, I think the next one should be conditions for learning. Yeah, perfect. So conditions for learning, again, we're just really thinking about all of the pieces that go into the conversation around how do we know when we need to start and what the start of school looks like. So we're working with a national organization called Opportunity Labs. They actually helped us uh, create some of the content for Launch Nebraska. And Opportunity Labs is composed of a, the former uh, Chief Operating Officer for New York Public City Schools, New York City Public Schools, excuse me, and an epidemiologist who worked for the WHO and CDC. So they are just experts in this field and we're really excited for them to help us think through, you know, those levels of risk. And I, I won't steal the Commissioner's thunder because he's going to talk about that here in a minute. 
but then more importantly, the guidance and the guidelines, as well as the requirements that go along with each of those pieces along, um, along the levels of risk. Um, and so we're working really hard there with UNMC, with our local health departments, as well as with Opportunity Labs to think through all of those pieces. Several of the questions have to do uh, with PPE, et cetera. And so that's, that's the kind of question that we're going to get answered um, uh, by Opportunity Labs is, you know, what, what are the different levels of risk and then when do students need to wear PPE or masks and what does that look like uh, in reality and in practicality as well. And then in the final piece, if you'll go to the next slide, I'm kind of going quickly and then Commissioner can back clean up like he does so well. But with continuity of learning, I just wanted to make sure that you all had access to um, and know about our professional development series led by Dr. Corey Epler. We've had some really exceptional uh, uh, professional developments over the past couple of weeks, um, really kicking off two weeks ago as we talk about unfinished learning. So super excited for that learning and then how we pivot that and move that uh, into planning for the fall. So be sure that you go to Launch Nebraska and check out that continuity of learning space and the professional development that is tied to that. Commissioner, I'll stop there and um, see if there's anything that you wanted to add or clarify. Yeah, and so Ling, one of the things I might just um, speak to for a second is, um, you know, kind of as we have uh, groups gathering, what's kind of our timeline that we're, we're working on for further guidance? What's, you know, kind of who are the other folks that are engaged in, in some of those conversations? So generally, can you give a little update on that front? Specific to this government, uh, the leadership and planning domain or just in general? All of them. Yeah, I think all of them in general is fine. So yeah, we have a lot of players that we're working with and really excited for, again, the, the opportunity to extend upon partnerships or expand upon partnerships. So our Opportunity Labs uh, folks plan to have this, a draft of the risk analysis, as well as uh, some of those protocols to us early this week. And then we want to workshop that. We want to Nebraskaize that. We want to make sure that our local public health uh, departments have access to that and can give feedback as well as UNMC and DHHS as well. In general, we've been really seeking uh, input. We've been working really closely with Jack Moles and NERCSA, have some contacts with GNSA and how we can really get in there. Been on calls with our MOEC team um, and some of the superintendents and, and leaders from the Omaha area. Um, we also are working with um, NASB and their, uh, their team. So thinking about the board perspective and how we get that. And then there's sort of a missing piece here for me right now, but I think there's an opportunity really to get some student voice um, and hear from our students about their experiences in the past, over the past couple of months, this summer, what they're really wanting and expecting, and then as we go into the fall. Um, so a lot of the work, honestly, the, the dial, the risk analysis, that's really going to come to play, I would say, within the next couple of weeks. I think we would have, by mid-June, a real idea and a real sense of what, um, uh, what this risk analysis and then the subsequent work that has to do with the protocols really looks like. Yeah, thanks, Link. So uh, there's a couple questions that are in the in the question and answer. I thought maybe you and I could try to answer them together. So the first one, the first one is, are we going to require masks for students and staff? And with the shortage of material, we have to get, you know, we have to get started on these things if they're going to take place. And so can we kind of address that one together a little bit? You bet. Well, I'll say from our, from what we're learning and what we're hearing from the CDC that the masks are going to be suggested and I would say recommended, if not required in our places that have um, a higher risk. Um, we've had conversations as an NDE with our state purchasing and thinking about how we can bulk order that. And I think we'll have some understanding of what that looks like here again in the next couple of weeks. So one of the things that Opportunity Labs talked about was not putting, you know, there's so many decisions that have to be made, one around like the actual, you know, opening and what opening looks like. We don't need to make that decision right now. And before we, before we um, 
before we jump to buying too many things or, or investing in those things, I think we need a better sense of what the risk is going to look like. And we'll have that again um, here within the next couple of weeks, I would say. Feel free to jump in, Commission. Yeah, and, and thanks. And I just, I was going to highlight this one. I mean, and Lane hit some of those points. I mean, we're trying to work with the state purchasing. I know that um, you know, one of the questions that surface in different areas, you know, should we go buy them? I would, you know, I'd recommend if you have normal channels that you can go get that done. We're trying to look at how we can at least use some of the, the state's leverage to, to uh, get some of those things in place. But if there are materials that are available, I know that's really a concern around cleaning supplies and other fronts that folks are worried about too. So we're exploring that. Hopefully know a little bit more as we continue to do that. Uh, continue to have those conversations. I also, you know, just would highlight that, um, you know, kind of as we go down these paths and there's like always constantly changing uh, information, it seems around each one of these. Uh, um, I, again, trying to get as prepared as we can. Um, if if uh, uh, schools, uh, as you have conversations kind of regionally and kind of where folks are uh, feeling that's at. I, I, I hope that's the, the, the message generally is please take steps forward to go ahead and get some of those things in place. We are trying to use the summer school guidance as at least our best thinking relative to uh, what you will need in place as we continue to build that out. And so that's, I guess that's the main point that I would say that doing that preparation work. I had a, another question on here from, um, uh, uh, Bill McAllister about starting early and he wrote in here on May 5th my guess is he meant August 5th because if we could start on May 5th all over again I, I think that'd be great but I think he means August 5th um, you know as far as your abilities to start early that we're perceiving that very much as your as your uh, you know local uh, ability to if that works out for you we hope that health conditions are uh, continue to see some improvement and that we're able to manage in that environment. Uh, maybe in, in similar fashion, um, there is uh, a, a question or at least maybe a statement of, of the significance of uh, static groups. I mean, I know part of our recommendations was trying to keep groups static, including I know that even came out in, in uh, conversations just around students generally. I One of the, the, the key elements of uh, expanding those groups is starting to get a real good grasp of how that works and to the extent the schools are able to use and kind of share their experiences as you have anything that's happening in person about how that works I think that'll be important but I, I completely agree figuring out how we get to um, um, you know that direction it'll be it'll be um, kind of a bit of a challenge so um, so we want to learn from these moments and try to move in in that direction as well. And then I'm going to do one more uh, one more question that just popped up uh, from Andy Rickley about PPE um, uh, and the the notion of trying to get those things in place. We are already actively working with with Doug Carlson and others on those orders. But my understanding, even from and from them and Lane, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Everyone's probably uh, having experiencing some of those challenges. I had a conversation with Dr. Poor um, today about hand sanitizer and the appropriate types of hand sanitizer for children. Um, I think there's a lot of other conditions that are um, going, but we are we are trying to use the the um, uh, state purchasing power if possible. Also, I see in Andy's point about ESUs and uh, we'll, we'll continue that dialogue with, with ESUs as well because uh, appreciative of their efforts to try to uh, work on those co-op purchasing uh, sides as well. So, and aggregating those bigger buys hopefully make us a bigger, bigger um, 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 well, opportunity to, to buy and purchase from those settings. So, um, and then, uh, um, there's a couple more things that popped up, but I think I'm going to kind of uh, jump to the next and maybe come back on, on a couple of these questions just to make sure because I'm kind of watching on time a little bit. I'll come back to a few more of these questions and, and see where we are able to get to on these fronts. So, um, so let me, let me kind of move to the next slide here. And thanks, Lane, for joining on, on these fronts and stick with me in case something else pops up. So um, I did want to hit the kind of the assessing risk um, and I wanted to share uh, a little bit about the 
at least my hopes. And again, we continue to have conversation with, uh, with our uh, public health folks, both at the state level and the local level. And I'm hoping at a local level, we can get to a point where we're really assessing risk in some, in some terms that are fairly easily understood by the public and by us uh, in, in a school setting. And there's kind of a couple different uh, uh, approaches right now. I know uh, Dr. Poor is working on something with some of the folks there in Moac and others in that area are trying to work on assessing that risk. And Lincoln and Lancaster County are working on uh, risk dial, I'll call it, for understanding kind of the levels of risk and the types of things that go into it. I would, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to get folks to look at something like this Utah site and hoping that we can actually get something established like this statewide, really not just for schools, but for everyone's sake, to really have a county by county understanding or at least a public health region by public health region uh, understanding of, of the, of the the risks associated. I know it can be kind of confusing around the DHMs and which counties are uh, in which status, and I think that will be an ever-changing environment. And so we're we're really trying to work with those folks to come up with a way that that makes that uh, um, you know uh, understandable from from across the state, um, and obviously quite a challenge to do that. But again, if if something like this is is helpful, it would be it would be, um, you know, kind of our, our best hope on that front. So um, uh, I see a couple questions that I'll hit up because they're related probably to the launch Nebraska side. Um, they, they said, well, maybe a couple points, and then you're welcome to jump in. I'll just try to read the questions and see if I can get to them. Um, first of all, do we think we'll have adequate guidance and updates on the, on the plan for August 3rd start? And, uh, you know, I guess depending on how you're going to define adequate, what I what I think is going to be necessary is that local planning is going to have to take place um, as part of that effort, and that the guidance that we keep putting out is not is not uh, uh, um, strictly about um, um, uh, well, let me put it this way: it's 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 more about a set of best practices as we can understand them, uh, given the the environment that we're at. And so, uh, and I see, I see another question about Lunch Nebraska guidance truly for intended for summer extracurricular activities are intended for summer learning. It's a, there's kind of a mix of those of summer learning and summer uh, uh, school, if you want to call it that, and, and other activities as well. And so it is that chance to kind of look at that. Again, we had folks from across the uh, um, public health arena, including folks from UNMC helping review uh, some of that guidance. Lane, is there anything you want to speak to on that particular front? Just, about just a couple of things, Commissioner. Yeah, so I would say I think we're, you're going to see a lot of movement in the conditions for learning and well all, across all three. So really in that governance uh, leadership and planning space, this idea of the funding element, which I know that Brian's going to talk about here in a little bit and the um, kind of the committees that you might want to be considering, the processes that you should consider, your scheduling, things like that. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of movement there. I think there's going to be a lot of developments even within this week on the conditions for learning and the work that Opportunity Labs and then UNMC and all of those health partners that we've mentioned. And then the final piece is around the academic supports through the continuity of learning uh, space as well. So we'll have some things that we can report and share out even by mid-June. Um, and, and again, to your point, whether that's adequate or not, it's, it's as quick as we can, because again, we want to be right um, and not fast on this. So we're trying really hard, we're working really hard, and we're trying to also bring together a lot of these people. As for the, uh, just to the quick question from Dr. Hasty, um, the idea of summer learning versus summer school, the guidance that we have on our website is really pertaining to the summer learning aspect. So when students, many students are in the same space with an instructor for whatever purpose that might look, right? And I would just refer you to the um, NSAA and their guidance around the activities specifically. We also link those in our uh, summer learning guidance as well. Yeah, thanks, Lane. And so I think I'll go ahead and kind of move on. I see some other questions, some about, some about, you know, how else to do risk assessment, others about uh, PPE and supplies. And I, I think we at least somewhat addressed that. Also a question about, um, you know, if we're still waiting on best practices, why are we opening, uh, where are we allowing uh, uh, 
uh, summer learning to take place on June 8th. And again, allowing versus mandating is one of those things too. If you don't feel prepared to uh, do uh, some of that work, it's not a mandate that, that you're doing in person. We want folks to kind of be doing that local planning. I think that's the main, the main key. And we believe uh, that, that what we have provided in the summer learning guidance around health is appropriate for what we know uh, at this moment in time. And so, um, again, there's, there's more work to do, no doubt. And, uh, and we're, we're trying to walk softly into the environment. So hopefully we can learn from that as we go into the fall. Um, I'll hit the next uh, uh, slide and uh, invite Brian Halstead to join me. I don't know if, am I breaking up when I'm not using video? Yeah, sometimes as well, you are. Okay, so it's probably because I'm sharing my screen too. So uh, I might actually unshare my screen and see if that helps a, a little bit with that, so. So Brian, do you wanna join and I'll leave the screen up while you talk and then uh, um, I'll, I'll try to listen in and, and make a few more comments. Mostly I just wanna hit the, you know, kind of where we're at at this moment in time with the CARES Act. All right, Commissioner, and thank you. Um, for everybody, you've probably seen this slide before. We've used it in the past, it's still the same. The Nebraska total of the CARES Act dollars for elementary and secondary emergency relief is 65 million and a couple hundred thousand. Uh, we have reserved 10% of that funding for statewide activities which leaves just under $59 million that's gonna be distributed out to the school districts in Nebraska. That funding will be distributed and available for all of our public school districts who are already eligible and receiving Title I funding right now. Um, so that dollar amount we have already created behind the scenes the tables that will show each and every school district's funding that's available. We have also, because equitable services is part of the CARES Act funding that's gonna be eligible, calculated what the equitable services portion is for each school district that they have to budget for initially and then engage with their non-public schools in the consultation to see whether the non-public schools want to participate in equitable services. Um, the commissioner submitted the application uh, a week ago, Friday, it was approved. The department is getting prepared all of the forms and documents. We intend to be sending out information to you this week. We have created a website where all of this information about the CARES Act, the reporting, the documentation, all of the information you're gonna need to know and the processes to be followed. So that's quickly where we at with the CARES Act. Uh, I'll turn it back to you, Commissioner. I'll try to stop sharing and see if that works a little bit better. Um, what I just would add to the CARES Act piece, there is going to be a dedicated website that will be up to share that information. I know that our team, um, Bryce and Jen and, and Beth and other folks that, that you're normally um, probably communicating with around federal funds will be uh, sharing additional information through that may have already for all I know today. Um, and so uh, you'll be able to see that and do those applications and uh, hopefully be able to move uh, forward with that fairly quickly. Um, one of the one of the other realities is we're trying to work closely with the governor on on his approach to the gears act. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of keep that keep that um, uh, uh, conversation going. If he was here, I'd let him speak to that. I don't know what other next details, but I believe they have submitted their their application in um, uh, to the U.S. Department of Ed on that on that share of the CARES Act funding as well. So you know, we'll continue to try to uh, monitor and watch for that. Um, uh, I have my last slide, which is the, I think essentially the kind of typical questions and and resources. 
on our website. And Lane, I did see a quick question about where the graduation guidance was posted. And I, I was gonna try to answer and then I thought I might be wrong. So I'll let you uh, maybe address that one. Yeah, I know it was sent out to all superintendents on um, and ESU leaders on Friday, but um, I'm not sure where it is posted on the NDE website. So I will follow up and make sure that we get that out here. Yeah, we'll so get sorry it that we missed you. Yeah, we'll get it posted in one of one of those sites, and eventually we hope to have all that type of guidance up on the Launch Nebraska site as well. So. So between there and our COVID uh, site, uh, hopefully one of those two places, um, you'll be able to find that. Um, also, it was asked, you know, when we when we make further pronouncements about what's required and what's not, I know in part what Lane's working on is kind of, as we do kind of work on the consistency around what the, the kind of risk assessment and risk nature of that is, if, if uh, and we'll keep working with local public health, but our intention is, uh, to keep building that out. Again, what I would be highly recommending for schools is to understand those environmental things. I've had a, a couple of folks say, hey, look, it's going to be impossible to social distance in a, in a classroom setting. We can't do six feet, foot separation, or if we do, it's a substantial uh, reduction in the number of, of um, uh, students. And so we want to keep having those conversations with you. That's our, in, our intention and keep raising those particular points. I know I had some questions from uh, uh, circulated from and again appreciate from the ESU standpoint, uh, the types of questions that we get there are very useful for us. I don't know that I have answers for I, well, I don't have the questions up in front of me. So I can't remember exactly. But, but, you know, some of them are kind of those, those uh, environmental and, and logistics standpoint that we've been talking about today. And so we'll continue to try to try to um, push on that on that front too and try to find some answers on those on those elements as well. So I do just uh, want to encourage you if you're not in either some group that's having conversations about best practices, um, you know, based on region, certainly our ESUs, thanks again for that effort, but otherwise similar conditions for schools. Uh, similar sizes of schools. I want to make sure folks are kind of looped in to your your conversations amongst yourselves as well. And um, to me, that's a big a big part of of the underlying effort that we're going to have to uh, keep keep going. So I I encourage you to do that. We'll keep kind of working on on these fronts, but but. Uh, um, um, and we'll, we'll kind of keep taking those things on. I see a few more questions in here. I hope, I don't know if I missed, you know, major themes or anything, but um, uh, I think we've captured most of those. I, I'll probably go ahead and the governor hasn't joined us as far as I can tell. And so, um, Lane, uh, anything that you want to kind of say in conclusion uh, for today? Yeah, you bet. Well, I just really appreciate the feedback, feedback and input that we've gotten from people. So one just example that I can think of, we had a couple of early questions about um, specific guidelines and guidance for band and choir, and therefore reached out to our colleagues at the Nebraska Music Educators Association and MEA, and are working collaboratively with them to think through the specific things that we need to be doing um, in our schools for band and choir um, this summer and into the fall. Um, and so just those kinds of questions, that kind of specificity is really helpful for us because if you're thinking it, guarantee that your colleagues are thinking it around the state. So just keep those questions coming. You can submit those on our um, COVID page um, or you can send those directly to me, any questions that you might have or input on the uh, Launch Nebraska site. So thank you for all the work that you're doing and the help that you're giving us. Yeah, and thanks, Lane. And, and Brian, I don't know if you wanted to add anything as we kind of close out um, as well. No, we hope to make the web page publicly available this week so everybody can get information on the CARES Act. All right, so I'll, I'll just close out and say once again, I mean, we're obviously in uh, at least in all of our lifetimes, uncharted territory relative to the types of challenges we face by this pandemic. But it's, you know, increasingly clear that the impacts uh, are, are so much broader than that. And we've been talking a lot in the agency about, uh, you know, certainly where we've been from an equity standpoint, but, 
but honestly, these moments are teaching us much more about the inequities uh, that we face in society, that we face uh, uh, generally, and how to best address that. And I, you know, I, I just want to tell you, it's, it's really um, uh, saddening to me when I end up seeing kids that are high school age kids, maybe even yet, um, uh, you know, feeling, uh, feeling, uh, you know, basically um, on the outside of our, our societal uh, expectations for their growth. It's a tough time for us to watch that across all of society. I, I want you to know that uh, these are going to be, uh, can continue to be challenging times, but I, I hope, um, and maybe hope's not a strategy as I've had some of you tell me before, but I do hope uh, that we can muster the kind of spirit to get through this all together. Uh, continue your hard work, as I know it takes a lot of your hard work to get through these moments. And uh, I do very much appreciate your leadership and education around the state of Nebraska. So um, I will end there. Uh, we will get back uh, next week at the same time. Um, and I'll, I will try to find out if there's more messaging or anything that needs to come out um, via the governor or other uh, health officials. And by the way, hopefully we have some of our health officials on today. And thanks for all of your efforts and your work. Um, as well. Many things happening and appreciate everyone stepping up to meet these challenges. So with that, I'll end it. Uh, thanks everyone and, and have a good rest of the day.